Hi everybody, it's Mr. El Camusi. Today we're going to discuss one of the highest forms of figurative language, called symbolism. Symbolism is one of the highest forms of figurative language. It goes beyond similes, metaphors, and hyperboles, which only deal with language, to encompass far greater concepts and ideas. Symbolism can play out in plots, character, and setting, and pretty much expects us to understand far deeper elements of what's going on in a story. Characters, items, colors, and even names can all be symbolic in one way or another. And so the definition of symbolism, or a symbol, is something that represents something else. It may be in the story in its own way, but it's actually just figurative. That item, or that object, or character, has a bigger meaning in a grander scheme. There are many universal symbols, or symbols that we know have different common meanings to society. For example, a white dove is a symbol of peace. Or a rose can be a symbol of love or romance. These universal symbols are common, but sometimes in the story, unexpected objects or characters can be symbolic. To illustrate this point, let's look at some of the more famous examples of symbolism in literature. A prime example of symbolic literature is the poem The Raven, written by Edgar Allan Poe. You may recognize Edgar Allan Poe as the author of the short story, The Telltale Heart. He is actually most well known for this poem, The Raven. The Raven opens with a man, who is the narrator of the poem, sitting at home at night, reading in his chambers. He starts to fall asleep, and suddenly he hears a knocking at the door. The poem begins with these words. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. While I nodded nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as if someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. The narrator opens the door to find a black bird called a raven fly into his house. The bird flies in and then settles right above his chamber door. The narrator finds it curious that this big black bird has flown into his house and sat right above his chamber door. He tries to engage the bird in conversation. But no matter what the narrator says to the bird, it only responds back with one word. Nevermore. Every time he talks to the bird, it responds with nevermore. As the poem continues, the narrator becomes frightened and even terrified, realizing that this isn't just an ordinary bird but it bears a far deeper and darker significance. The poem ends with the narrator dropping dead on the floor while the bird looms over him. Now if we're to take the story literally and just read it as a literal tale, it's actually a silly and even foolish narration. Who cares if a bird shows up at somebody's house and they just end up dying? Thus we can conclude that this poem is actually symbolic. The bird is a symbol of something. What could the bird be a symbol of? Think of the things that a bird can symbolize. First of all, the bird is called the raven. Raven is a big black bird. Black is the color of many things, but one of them is death. Black is a symbol of death. And so, when death shows up at this narrator's doorstep and sits right above his door, he begins to realize as time goes on what the words nevermore actually mean. Nevermore means never again. The narrator will never again eat. He will never more sleep. He will never more breathe. He's going to die. And that's what the black raven is saying when he repeats the words nevermore. Thus, the raven is not just a bird sitting on someone's chamber door. It's a symbol of death arriving to end someone's life. The raven is an excellent and somewhat obvious example of symbolism, but sometimes symbolism can be more subtle. Take, for example, The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Gatsby is a super rich young man who just acquired an immense amount of wealth. He throws huge parties every weekend, so big that the whole city of New York actually comes out to party at his house. At first, we think he's just some rich guy, but what we find out later is that Gatsby has acquired all this money just to win the attention of a young girl named Daisy. Gatsby's obsession with Daisy actually goes back many years. They used to be lovers a long time ago, 
But Daisy ended up moving away to New York and getting engaged to a man named Tom. Now, Gatsby is trying to win her back by any means. By day, Gatsby throws parties, and all throughout the night, people party. But when the party is over and everybody goes home, Gatsby is left all alone with his memories and his hopes. Gatsby's mansion was actually acquired right across the lake from Daisy's home, and every night he would go out on the dock and observe her home, just watching her across the lake, hoping that one day he and Daisy will be reunited. The symbol in The Great Gatsby is a little more subtle. It's a little harder to uncover. See, when Gatsby watches Daisy's dock from all the way across the lake, the only way he can see it is he knows that her dock has a green light. So every night he goes out and watches the green light. Now on the surface, a green light may not seem like it means much. But in this novel, the green light is very symbolic. See, colors can be very symbolic in a story. And in this case, green is a symbolic color. Why did the author choose to make the dock light green, the one that Gatsby is always trying to pursue? Well, this may be hard to uncover and it takes a little bit of thought. Green can be a color symbolizing a lot of things. One thing can be greed. Gatsby is rich and has a great deal of wealth, and maybe that's what he's pursuing with Daisy, is to share that wealth with someone. But green is also a color symbolizing something else. Money. See, Gatsby is not just chasing Daisy, but he's chasing the love of money. And in the end, his pursuit of Daisy and of money leads to his own destruction. Some of our most well-known and loved fairy tales contain symbols. The most common and probably most well-known of them is Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood has been sent to her grandma's house to deliver a basket of goodies. Her mother sends her off but warns her, telling her, make sure you stay on the path. Do not go away from the path and go into the forest, because many dangers are hiding there. But Little Red Riding Hood, not following the direction of her mother, decides to go off the road because she is tempted by some flowers. While she is there, she runs into the wolf, and the wolf invites her over to hang out with him. We know the rest of the story, but the primary premise here is that the story is about a little girl who was told to stay on a certain path by her mother, decided to break that path, and she was tempted to do so, and later ended up meeting a very dangerous animal who almost took her life. The question is, why do parents tell their daughters this story? What does Little Red Riding Hood symbolize? What does the path symbolize? And what does the wolf symbolize? Think about it for a minute, and then we'll talk about what you came up with. While we can debate a lot of the meanings of these symbols, here are some of the most well-known or oft-remembered symbols. Little Red Riding Hood is, in fact, of teenage years, and so she symbolizes a lot of the girls who are becoming teenagers or growing up into maturity. The path that Mother asks her to stay on will keep her out of trouble and out of temptation and out of danger. This could be argued to be the path that keeps the girl in purity, keeps her from making any mistakes that would lead her away from purity. But, Little Red Riding Hood is tempted to get off of the path by the flowers. Those flowers could be a symbol of the temptations that sometimes lead girls down wrong paths, as opposed to the paths that are the right ones, the ones that Mom suggests. Unfortunately for Little Red Riding Hood, waiting for her in the forest, away from the path, is this male wolf, symbolizing the danger that males can be to young girls who are unaware, because that wolf is trying to take advantage of her, just like advantage can be taken of young girls who don't stay on the right path and who follow temptation. This may sound a little grim, and it may not be the story you remember from your childhood, but actually many of these fairy tales and fables have these kinds of meanings. Fables are full of symbolism. In fact, they are symbolic stories in and of themselves. Parents are trying to tell their children very serious and very important messages. But instead of doing it directly, they tell their children with nice characters and funny stories. However, if we examine these as symbolic stories, the meanings and the lessons are much deeper and sometimes much darker. 
To wrap up our discussion on symbolism, let's take a look at one more example from the novel A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. A Clockwork Orange is a dark and sinister story about a young man, a criminal, who goes out at night. He beats people in the street, steals their money, and commits every crime imaginable. Finally, he is arrested. At first, he is sent to jail to spend the rest of his life in prison. But after some psychiatrists figure that they can do something to help him, they take him in and perform a series of experiments to make him a better person. Needless to say, the experiments go very, very wrong, and in the end, end up ruining his life. What is this character's name? Alex. Now this name may seem like a very simple and insignificant name, but there's a reason why the author chose to call this character Alex. See, Alex, in Latin, from its Latin root, means without law. And giving this character this name further explains why he is an outlaw. It helps us to know that he's an outlaw and will always be an outlaw. So let's recap. Symbolism is basically an object or item or idea that means or represents something else. Symbols can come in many forms. Some are universal symbols that we all know. Some are characters in a story or poem. Some are colors with very significant meanings. Others are characters and entire plots and settings. And some are just in a name. Think deeper and read deeply when examining a story. Symbolism lies everywhere. Thanks for watching.